Welcome to Art for Film's Sake. I'm Stephen Reed, and this is Ghost in the Shell by Christoph Domoratsky. When it comes to artificial intelligence, there seems to be just two schools of thought. It's either a good thing that will remove menial tasks from our lives, thus freeing us up to engage in more meaningful pursuits like promoting diversity or eating homemade tofu, mm. or it's coming for our jobs and will subsequently fast track the human race into a stupidly horrifying self-destruction. Shouldn't we be a little less binary about such a complex subject? Released in 1995, Ghost in the Shell tackled it in far more nuanced and contemplative ways. It is a dizzying film, a real evolutionary leap in the dark that anticipated our dependence on digital connection and our tendency to cede our identity and presence to the web. Set in 2029, with the advancement of cybernetic technology, the human body can be augmented or even completely replaced with cybernetic parts. And so, the consciousness left inhabiting this shell is called the ghost. The story centres on one such ghost in the shell, a lonely government operative called Motoko Kusanagi. One of the main themes in the film is that of belonging. The desire to be understood by those around her is reflected in Kusanagi's desire to understand her ghost. With a greater understanding of her ghost, she hopes to achieve a sense of belonging in a world that doesn't necessarily see her as fully cyborg nor fully human. It's a brilliant piece of cinema that dives fearlessly and thoughtfully into the intricate and philosophical exploration of self-identity and belonging in an evolving technological world. So which human artist would you choose to create a poster for such a complex film? Me? I'd choose Christoph Domoradsky. Here is an artist with a style that confounds, confuses and discombobulates in equal measures. An artist with technical talents that excite, delight and astound on multiple levels. And boy has he created a belter. It's a thing of striking beauty. It grabs your attention, demands you look closer insists you contemplate. But where to begin with such a tour de force? Domoratsky blends together elements from the film in a seemingly haphazard way, but under closer scrutiny you can see that they are quite deliberate. Motoko Kusanagi is rightly the main focus. She stands alone at the bottom of the piece, detached from the tapestry behind her. It's a subtle but brilliant way of showing her perceived isolation. And the first thing you notice when your eyes are inevitably drawn into that madly chaotic tapestry is that larger face of hers. Positioned above and looking down onto that figure of herself is a wonderfully simple expression of self-analysis. She's literally pondering her own existence. And as your eyes dart around the rest of the piece, a seemingly random jigsaw puzzle where all the pieces don't seem to fit together, you find a myriad of wonderfully realised vignettes from the film. The thrillingly tense confrontations with the government agents. 
the eerily beautiful streets and alleyways, the serenely captivating rooftop contemplations, the climactic confrontation with the big robotic spider tank. All of them drawn in the artist's trademark crisply organic style. This compelling combination of line work and murky textures works equally as well as the sharp manga style of the film itself. And dotted amongst this majestic melee, you'll notice a lot of faces, all of them wearing a slightly dreamy thousand yard stare. Perhaps these were included to add an extra feeling of longing to belong? What is clear that these elements combine to capture the essence of the film quite beautifully. The overall effect is a work of art that envelops the characteristic noir tone and familiarity of alienation. It's a wonderful achievement by the artist. But Domorowski doesn't stop there. Almost imperceptible amongst the mosaic of shapes and colour are the words ghost and shell writ large. As with a lot of his work, I love the fact that these words are pretty much unreadable. Like a cyborg looking for signs of belonging, you have to work really hard to see them. And of course, there's more restless typography below. Domoradsky really goes to town on the titles and credits. Here we have a feisty, jagged treatment that juts and jars its way into the composition. It takes on the obvious form of a circuit board, but also hints at the abstract, like a glitching cyborg's memory. What will our world really be like in 2029? Will AI have taken over by then, or will we barely notice it? This chaotic and exasperating work of art positions itself in the no man's land between these two realities and furnishes it with a landscape and topography all its own. It is mad and chaotic and exasperating and often makes no sense, but actually not quite as confusing as it seems. Even the most garbled of moments fit approximately into the vague scheme of things and those that don't are, I guess, just part of the collateral damage occasioned by Domoradsky's assault on the senses. How boring movie posters might be without Christoph Domoradsky. And for a long, long moment, how dull reality always seems after you turn your eyes away from a poster as good as this. Thank mm -hmm. you.